Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Vern Hall of the Free Gift Gospel Mission in Kingsport, Tennessee. And we hope you have a wonderful day. God has given us a beautiful day today. And I'm here today with my friend, Pastor Brandon of uh, Strong Tower Baptist Church. And we're here today to share the Word of God with you. We're not here to provoke a ride or antagonize you in any way. But we're here to love you with the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with that said, I'd like to read several verses from the book of Romans, chapter number 1, verses 17 through 19. And if you are able, we encourage you to hang out for a while and stop and listen to the Word of God today. And if you need prayer or a free Bible, by all means, come and talk to uh, my friend, Pastor Brandon, right here. In Romans, chapter number 1, verse 17, the Bible says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. This past Tuesday morning, I was listening to a podcast called The uh, Briefing, Dr. Albert Moeller. It was his podcast, and he was talking about how the Notre Dame Cathedral was so important in explaining the modern era. The French Revolution of the late 18th century and early into the 19th century was described as being an expression of the radically secular modern impulse that saw the authority of Christianity as something that must be overthrown. Now we are not Roman Catholics here today. I want to stress that. Myself and Pastor Brandon, we are not Roman Catholics here today, but I'm giving you this story from the perspective of secular France back in this particular time period because they were bent to overthrow what they considered to be Christian authority. And because of this, what happened in 1793 is that the cult of reason came in. And they pulled the image of Mary out of that Notre Dame Cathedral and they installed the goddess of reason on the high altar. A few years later, in 1801, a man by the name of Napoleon comes on the scene. And in 1801, Napoleon reaches an agreement between his own government and the Roman Catholic Church. And this agreement, for all intents and purposes, reestablished Roman Catholicism as the state church in France in 1801. Now Napoleon sought to reestablish the Roman Catholic Church, but this is what I would like for you to understand today. He did this not because he had any love for God. He did this not because he had any concern for God, but he did this to further his own agenda. To further his own agenda. You see, this man Napoleon, he believed that the moral teaching of the Roman Catholic Church was necessary for a well-functioning society. Now today, we see this beautiful cathedral, the Notre Dame Cathedral, we see it is destroyed. We see it lies in ruins today. And truly, it's a sad loss for the country of France. It is a sad loss for France, my dear friend, because truly they've lost a national monument. But with this in mind, I want to cut right through the chase today and say that not much has changed in the last 200 years since the days of Napoleon. Because today, more than ever before, Men and women in this world are seeking power and they're seeking control 
through their own alleged autonomy, they take the knowledge that they have of the one true God as Creator, and according to Romans chapter 1, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. That means they take the knowledge of God that they have as Creator and they suppress that knowledge. They hold that knowledge down. And they go about inside of their own lives to fashion a God in their own image. They go about to create a false God that will not bring any conviction of sin into their lives. And they take that knowledge of the one true God and they hold that down. But may I say to you today, my dear friend, and as, as you pass by here in Borchuk Plaza today, be encouraged. May the Word of God be a blessing and an encouragement to you today. But I want to say this, that when we stand in judgment, we will not be standing before some false God that we created in our own image. We will not be standing before some Jesus that we created in our mind. And we will not be standing before another human being. We will not be standing before a professor or an earthly judge or an intellectual or a philosopher. But we will be standing before the true and the living God. You see, we might walk by somebody out here in Borchuk Plaza today and judge ourselves according to the standard of what we see in them. You might pass by here today and look at me and judge yourself according to the standard that you see in me and you might walk away thinking that you look pretty good. But that's not the standard that counts today, my dear friend. That standard will mean absolutely nothing when we stand before the righteous judge of the universe. When we stand before the righteous judge of the universe, we will all be judged according to His perfect standard. And what we need to understand today is this. Unless we view God as Isaiah the prophet viewed God in Isaiah chapter 6 when he said, I saw the Lord sitting upon His throne and He was high and lifted up. And he said, I saw the seraphims cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Unless we see God as Isaiah saw Him, high and lifted up, and unless we see ourselves as we really are, as people who are undone, God, if we'll do that, God is able to do for you just as He did for Isaiah and not leave you in that broken and undone condition. God is able to make you a new creation. God is able to raise you to spiritual life. And He will not leave you in that undone state when you repent and believe the Gospel. And when you put your faith and trust in Christ and Him alone. So many people today have an exalted view of self and a diminished view of God. But my dear friend, we've got it backwards today. The God that created this universe, the Bible said He upholds all things by the word of His power. And this God is not disengaged from His creation. He is active in this world today. He is active in the lives of His creatures today. And when we have a right view of God and a proper view of self, we'll understand how blessed we really are that the God of this Bible would love any of us. David said in Psalm chapter 8, verse number 4, and as you pass by here today, we want to be a blessing to you. We want to be an encouragement to you. If you need a free Bible, come over and get a free Bible. If you need prayer, come over and talk with us today. But I want to share with you the Word of God from Psalm chapter 8 and verse number 4. David asked the question, he says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And I understand today, my dear friends, that that verse has an application to the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not lost on us today, my dear friends, as finite human beings. 
to consider the majesty of God's marvelous works in this universe and the glory of His architecture. You see, that Notre Dame Cathedral was an architectural wonder. It was an architectural masterpiece. But it is nothing compared to the architecture of God in creating this universe today. And it's a wonder and it's an amazement that such an awesome God and such a mighty God would even notice us, much less care for His people. But He does care. I say to you today, my dear friend, that God does care. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gives His people love that passeth knowledge, peace that passes all understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is the God that we want you to know today in a saving way. We all have knowledge of this God as Creator. We all, by God's revelation, we know that God exists because God has revealed Himself to us. But this is the God that we want you to know in a saving way today. This is the God whose Lordship we call you to acknowledge today that you receive the gift of faith and repentance and be raised to spiritual life in Jesus Christ. God created this world and everything in it. And the God who created this world, my dear friend, is perfectly just, He's perfectly righteous, He's perfectly holy, and He is without sin. But sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's you, that's me, that's all of us. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God, by His righteous standard, He requires of us that we repent and believe the gospel. God, by His righteous standard, He has made a way for us to receive salvation and eternal and everlasting life. You see, we've all broken the law of God. God's law says, Thou shalt not bear false witness, yet so many of us have lied. God's Word says, Thou shalt not commit adultery, Yet so many of us look with lust. God's Word says thou shalt not murder. But so many of us have hated another human being unjustly. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the punishment that a just, righteous, and holy God has prescribed for sin is an eternity in hell. But here's the good news. God, because God so loved this world, he gave His only begotten Son. Christ has come into this world fully God and fully man. Born of a virgin, made under the law to redeem them that were under the curse of the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave. He lived a life that you and I could not live for 33 seconds. He lived it for 33 years. And He went all the way to the cross of Calvary. And there He took upon Himself the just punishment for your sin and for my sin. And He died a death on the cross that He did not deserve. He died the death that you and I deserve. And He said, it is finished. And on the third and appointed day, He arose from the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And He lives today. And John 14 and 19 says, Because He lives, ye shall live also. And what this God requires of you, and what this God requires of me, is that we repent of our sins and believe the Gospel. 
God calls you and I to turn away from a life of sin and to look to Christ and Him alone for eternal and everlasting life. So the call goes out today, my dear friend. If you are here today and you are saved by the grace of God, we rejoice with you in your salvation. You are our brother or sister in the Lord. But if you're here today and you do not know Christ in a saving way, the call goes out today, my dear friend. Repent and believe the gospel. Turn aside from sin and look to Christ and Him alone and you will find Christ to be a perfect Savior. If you need a Bible, come over and talk to us. We'll give you a Bible. If you need prayer, come over and talk to us. We'd love to pray with you. We hope you have a blessed and a wonderful day today. May God bless you. Enjoy this beautiful day, but do not enjoy this beautiful day at the cost of your own soul. Look to Christ. If you don't know Christ, look to Him today. God bless you all. Thank you for listening.